Cool. Welcome. Uh, my name is Theodore Psilas, uh, student number PSLTHE001. David DaCosta, DCSDAV01. This is our demo for Prac 4. Yep. Let's get going. Cool. 3096, Triple E 3096. So just a quick quick thing we broke up the, the the code into two sort of blocks david took the threading and then i saw, sort of took the setup and the print adc and then we combine work together and combined those two blocks together as you'll see in the code um so to just share my screen quickly um as you can see here i'll try to get it to focus this is the ldr that we're using and then over here that is the temperature sensor and this is the MCP 3008, which is the ADC. Uh, here's also the push button that we have, and all of this is connected to the Raspberry Pi. So currently it's plugged in. You'll see later when we demonstrate how it works, but you can see here this rail, this outermost rail is the ground, that, and the ground is connected to the Pi. Similarly, the innermost rail is the power which is supplied with the 3 v, three volt 3 power uh, from the Pi as well. Uh, another important thing is the voltage divider. Uh, so the LDR uh, was not working properly. It was giving uh, incorrect or inconsistent values. And as a result, an uh, LDR had to be connected with it in, in, vo in a voltage divider configuration where the output is going into channel two or pin three of the ADC. Um, so you can clearly see that uh, the LDR is connected to power, the inner, innermost rail, and then the resistor is connected to ground. Same here, the, vol, the push button uh, is connected to G, a GPIO pin uh, or GPIO 23, and that then is also connected to ground. And using the data sheet, uh, if you can see clearly, the um, let me zoom in. The temperature sensor has the V out, VCC, and VDD. Uh, as you can see, the rightmost pin, if you're looking at it from face, uh, from the flat face, uh, is the ground, and then the leftmost pin is VD, VCC. Uh, with the middle pin B and V out connected to channel one. So that's this demonstration. We'll just go through the flow diagram of the code. Cool. So how it works is you call the main method by running uh, path in three P3 dot PR. That calls the setup function. The setup function then start uh, creates the, uh, sets up the button and the, um, the interrupt. That then also prints out the first column of what our output will be. Then it calls the function called print sensor thread. That sets up all the threads. Uh, it sets it up uh, with threads threading .tama, and threading .tama runs the thread at a given period, which is specified. And then it starts the thread. The thread will print the ADC output. So print ADC just prints out the sensor values based on a conversion from the input to the output, which, which Theodore did. Then uh, if there's an interrupt by the button, that the callback of the interrupt is to a function called increment level. That then changes the current period of the thread from either what, 10 seconds to five seconds or one second. And then if it surpasses that, it will wrap around. So yeah. that is how we manage the different yeah, periods or of reading. And this will all be shown in the running of the code. So yeah. then to just point out specific things in terms of the code itself, we had to derive a transfer function for the actual uh, voltage or otherwise known as the ambient temperature, TA. Uh, this was used uh, using the data sheet for the uh, temperature component, otherwise known as the MCP9700. Another thing to point is obviously the, the uh, adding of a, a, an event uh, in terms of the, the button pressed that it calls the, the uh, function increment index, which is used to just increment and in the change the various sample rates. 
another one uh, is just how it is important to have a try and uh, accept method or else your function won't run properly. Uh, if there are any errors, it won't throw the errors and obviously you need to clean up your GPIOs. And then David and might want to run the... So you'll see at the bottom of the screen on line 79, it shows print sensor thread. That then calls that function above at line 46, which reads in the period, which is specified by what the current state of the button is. So if it hasn't been pressed, the period will be 10 seconds. Then it sets up a thread using threading.timer, which runs it at that given period. So the sample rate will be at that given value, which we set up starts the thread and then it calls the print adc function which outputs that the values given by the adc uh, after being transformed using the transfer fu transfer function that theodore previously mentioned uh, when the button is pressed it calls that callback called increment index that will be the uh, interrupt and it then changes the period of the current period from either 10 seconds to five seconds or one second or wrap around back to 10 seconds. Awesome. So moving on, we've gone through the design connections and the intro, and now we are going to just run through the actual implementation. So if I just quickly switch to my Pi, uh, which should be visible, um, I run the Pi. As you can see, it starts reading, temperatures is fine. The light reading is slightly lower as obviously we are doing this at night, um, but uh, you can see the temperature reading is the ADC value and light reading is ADC value and the temperature is obviously in degrees calculated via the transfer function. Now currently the sampling rate is 10 seconds, but if I were to push the button, the current sampling rate, which is 10 seconds, will complete its cycle and then after it's completed its cycle, the sampling rate will change to five seconds. So you'll see the next sample time will be 35 and then it will be 70 again. Uh, it will go to 40 seconds. And now if I increment, if I push the button again, um, this time will increase to a sampling time of one second. So there you can see the change in temperature, change in light reading and temperature reading of the ADC values. Now, at the same time, if I cover and place my hand or finger over the LDR, you'll see that the value over here decreases in the light reading. It is significantly lower, at least by 6,000. Um, and uh, if I release it, uh, it goes up. And alternatively, if I shine a torch on the LDR, you'll see that it should yeah, go up. You up. can see it goes jumps from 7,000 to approximately 40,000, 38,000. Right, and to just for completeness sake, if I press the button once more, what it will do it, it is it will reset, um, change in the sampling time back to 10 seconds. Um, everything works as expected. Um, so yeah, that's the pro uh, demo. Oh, yeah, and um, uh, just small advice on what maybe could be changed or anything like that. The uh, light reading, the LDR, it's outputted as ADC values. We don't really understand exactly what those values are. If there was a conversion or transfer function to change it to lumens to make it more understandable, that would be great. Or, yeah, that's all I can yeah. probably say. I mean, uh, yeah, and, and something else that you can do is obviously we had the sampling timer to finish doing its cycle until the next, uh, after you've increased the button, that will come into effect. Uh, and a feature that you could add is that it's an instantaneous effect. So as soon as the button is pressed, uh, the, the sampling rate changes immediately. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much our thoughts on the crack. Uh, and I guess that includes concludes our um, presentation. So thank yeah, you so much. It was quite successful. And yeah, it was good practical. Worked well. Awesome. Thanks, Anne. Bye.